Don't hang up that phone. We found what you're looking for. Welcome to the Five Minutes with RCDD podcast. Well, seeing how we're pulling Category 6A, the most powerful twisted pair in the world. You gotta ask yourself this one question Did I pull 295 or 300 feet? Well, do you feel lucky? Do you punk? In this podcast, you'll learn the differences between a 66 and 110 punch tool, the proper way to install a support cable, along with terminating and testing parameters. What exactly does RCDD stand for? Really can't do diddly? (laughs) Or just some guy that's just sitting around in a chair making podcasts. So join us as we talk about the ever-changing world of telecommunications. From ISP to OSP. From copper to fiber. Design to installation. Now send the new guy to the truck for a bucket of dial tone and the cable stretchers. While you listen to an informative program on telecommunications. Here's your host, Chuck Bowser, RCDD. Welcome to episode four, the information superhighway. Have you ever thought about how data gets transmitted? Have you ever wondered how when you go to YouTube and you fire up your favorite YouTube channel or you're binge watching your latest Netflix series, it's, it's house for us right now, how that video and audio gets to you? Have you ever wondered how when you send that email, how it gets from your outbox to the recipients? Well, today we're going to cover that. But first, let me ask you a question. What is megahertz versus megabits? We're starting a three-part series, and this episode is going to cover bits and bytes. So episode two will cover things such as encoding schemes, like return zero and non-return zero, talk what what it does with all those bits and bytes. And then the third one is we're going to take those first two, and then we're going to explain how it applies to being transmitted, i.e. cable or wireless. But before we dive into that conversation, first we got to talk about is What is communications? Right now, I'm communicating to you through this microphone, through bits and bytes, and through cable and downloading to your phone, maybe even over wireless if you're doing it on your cell phone. What is communications? Well, communications requires three components, a transmitter, a receiver, and a pathway between those two. So, for example, right now, My mouth is the transmitter transmitting to my microphone, which is the receiver, and it's using, as I'm talking, I'm moving, I'm pressurizing air, and it's moving the diaphragm inside the microphone. And then that microphone takes that information, that analog signal, changes it to a digital signal, ones or zeros, and changes it into electricity, and then transmits that through the cable into my laptop to record it. And then when I get done recording the show, I'm going to post it, and then it gets, you know, goes to the internet. It's going to show up on your, your iPhone. And then when you hit play, it's going to be your speakers are going to be reverberating what basically I said. So in, in essence, I'm the transmitter, you're the receiver. But we have a lot of stuff in between us. So the pathway between the transmitter and receiver, it can be cable or it can be wireless. Now for cable, it can be unshielded twisted pair cable. It could be one pair if it's just a simple analog voice line. It could be multiple twisted pairs. For example, if you're doing like a 10 gigabit LAN and you're listening to this over the network, it's going across those four pair. It can be done over shielded twisted pair. And we'll talk about more about those are in future episodes. It can also be done over fiber, whether it's single mode fiber or multi-mode. Matter of fact, if you're listening to this, I guarantee you at some point in time between the time I upload this to my service and you download it, it will go over fiber optic cable. So it will go over a combination with copper, fiber, and maybe even, like I said, wireless if you're listening to it on your iPhone. If your iPhone is set up to download via the cellular network, it's being done over wireless. Or if you have your iPod setting set up so it downloads on your wireless network when you're home. The transmitter takes all that information, whether it's a video signal, an audio signal, maybe a spreadsheet, pictures, it turns them into ones and zeros and sends that across the medium, and then your receiver takes that information and puts it all back together again. The key is, how do we get more information across the medium at once? So a long time ago, when you just had voice cabling, it was just an analog voice signal. 
Now we're doing, like I said, music and video and all kinds of other stuff, which requires more bandwidth than the old cable used to give us. That old cable was called POTS cabling, P-O-T-S, plain old telephone service. It was only capable of doing so much bandwidth. It could not handle today's bandwidth applications. Think of the whole bits and bytes and bandwidth as, as a highway. I like to talk in parables because it kind of helps relay subjects. Because, yes, you might be an expert listening to this, but there might be somebody listening to this, so this might be the first time they're hearing it. So think of it as the information superhighway. You have a multi-lane highway, and you have bits, which are people, in a car, which is a byte, being driving down the highway. That's basically what, that's why they call it the information superhighway. Now, bits and bytes are often confused together, especially when it comes to computers and bandwidth. In computers, there's only two states. It's either on or it's off, right? It's represented as a one or a zero. Well, actually, when you get into the hard drives, it actually goes by the polarity of the, you know, whether it's north or south. So the message needs to be based on whether it's the signal's on or off. So again, we're going to focus mostly on digital signals because it, when it boils down to it, most stuff today is going to be digital. And with digital, it's either on or it's off. It's either one or zero. And each of those states represents a one or zero. That is called a bit. So the bit is a one or zero. Now, what can you do with a one or zero? Not a whole heck of a lot. But when you put those eight bits together into what's called a byte, now you've got something. Because remember, you got eight bytes. Sorry, you have eight bits. And these, those bits can be either on or off. So what that means is if you take 2 to the 8th power, because it can be either on or off, so there's two states, and then 8 bytes, there's 256 possible combinations. They're typically represented as 0 through 255. Now, when it comes to storage, they're typically described in bytes. For example, 1 kilobyte is 1,000 bytes. 1 megabyte is 1 million bytes. I, I remember... When I was really young, I was in my early 20s, and me and my buddy, he had more money than I did because he only had one kid and I had three kids. And he had went out and bought a brand spanking new 20 meg hard drive to update his computer. And we were like in awe, 20 megs. We'll never be able to fill up this hard drive. Now you can buy a camera where one picture would fill that hard drive up. So it just kind of shows you how, how much technology has progressed. There's a thing called Moore's Law. Um, that's your homework assignment. Look up at Moore's Law. And then there's also a gigabyte, which is about one billion bytes. And another funny story, when I was a young communications technician, we were doing a wiring up cabling in a very large law firm in downtown D.C. And they were putting in this big rack. And this rack was four feet wide by four feet deep. It was eight feet tall and had all kinds of stuff inside of it. I remember the guy telling me, yeah, when we get done with this, this thing will be able to hold one gigabyte of information. A four by four by seven foot tall rack could hold one gigabyte. Today, they make flash drives, literally, that you can put in your pocket that have multiple gigs on them. A terabyte's about one trillion bytes. So again, you have those ones and those zeros. You, know, you put them all together. Those are the bits. And then everybody piles into that car, and that's your byte. And on top of your car, you have a letter, right? Now, how do you know which letter it is? Well, this is where ASCII comes to the rescue. ASCII is an acronym. Our industry loves acronyms. It's A-S-C-I-I. That acronym stands for the American Standard Code for Information Exchange. Basically, they assign letters, symbols, and punctuation to a two-digit code. So, for example, if you were to type in RCDD, capital R, capital C, capital D, capital D, on your keyboard, it's represented as an 82, 67, 68, and 68, because 82 stands for capital R, 67 stands for capital C, and 68 stands for capital D. Now, if I were to, for some reason, mess up and type it up in lowercase, it would be represented as 114, 99, 100, 100. Because 114 is a lowercase r. Well, 99 is a lowercase c, and 100 is a lowercase d. So there is a difference between uppercase and lowercase. So again, going back to our example earlier, let's say you're going on a vacation. Everybody in your whole entire neighborhood is going on vacation. Everybody's going to the beach. And it's kind of, you live in a weird neighborhood because everybody in this neighborhood has six kids. 
and everybody has a spouse. So that means you have eight people. So you eight people get in your cars. Now think about this. Is everybody's kids the same as your kids? Heck, let's be honest. Your kids aren't the same as each other, right? And that's, again, that you said it's on or it's off. When you all pile in, because of the buildup of how the number of ones and the zeros, that tells whether it's going to be an R or a C or a D and a D. Now, everybody gets in their car, and everybody decides to drive to the beach. So they're going down, you know, whatever major highway to go to the beach. So when everybody gets in their cars and they're driving, everybody's got a letter on top of the roof. So the receiver's got to take that information and put it all back together. So it'll say, oh, he typed in R, C, D, D. And then it changes it to a, a visual medium on your screen so you can understand what it is. There's your bits and bytes. So next episode, we're going to talk about the encoding schemes and talk about how we can get more information on that highway. Because we all know if you're trying to go to the beach on, for example, like Labor Day weekend, it's going to be a nightmare because there's going to be more cars than there is rooms for that for that highway. Another thing I want to touch base on before we sign off today's episode, uh, I just got informed by my company that I'm attending the Fall Bixie Conference. That's going to be unusual for me because this will be the first one I've ever attended virtually. I've been, I'm a veteran of going to lots of Bixie conferences, but they've always been the, I've just physically shown up. But because of the whole COVID thing, they're doing it virtually. So I'm going to be attending this year and I'm going to be learning lots of new stuff at the conference. So my question is, are you attending the fall conference? And is there something specific that you want to learn out of that conference? Make sure that you uh, send us an email at chuck at five minute rcdd.com i do like to mentor people i have two slots open for people for two people that who want to be mentored now there is going to be a an interview process and a questionnaire that you're going to, have to fill out because i want to make sure that you're dedicated to learning because if i'm going to put energy into you i want to make sure that you have energy to get through it as well so i have two positions open for my mentoring program and if you want that make sure you email me and i'll send you that information So until we get to the second series of this, remember, nobody's an expert, but the best you can be is a constant learner. Until then, take care. That's it for this episode of today's podcast. We hope you were able to learn something. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Also, leave a rating so we can help even more people learn about telecommunications. Until next time, be safe.